Welcome to Lesson 4, People Allowed Inside and Outside the Polling Place. First, voter solicitation inside a polling site. Since 1845, Floridians have been voting in person. It's a tradition unlike any other in American history. The rights of the voter and the privacy of their ballot is key to a successful election. Inside your polling room, voters, those there to assist voters, election staff, authorized poll watchers are allowed to be inside. You may be in a precinct that is heavily populated with the public, like a community center. You may be wondering, what about voters wearing campaign gear? Voters are allowed to wear campaign gear when voting. They are there to vote, however, and should not be campaigning inside the room. If they wish to stay and support a candidate or issue, they must adhere to the law regarding solicitation outside the polling site. What about the media wanting to come inside? Photography and video is still against the law inside a polling room. If the media arrives, contact the Supervisor of Elections Office and allow the media outside the polling room. Can a police officer come into the polling room? Yes, if they are there to vote or have been asked to come in by the clerk. What should I do if someone is loitering inside my polling room? It's okay to greet them and see if they need assistance. If they're there to support a candidate or issue, they must adhere to the laws regarding solicitation. However, if you feel uncomfortable or the person seems dangerous, contact the Supervisor of Elections Office immediately. Can someone bring a firearm into the polling room? A firearm is not allowed inside the polling room. Keep in mind, a police officer that arrives to vote may be wearing their firearm and that's okay. They can vote and will leave the room. It's okay to ask someone if they're a member of law enforcement, but by no means should you confront someone with a firearm. Some of our polling site owners keep coming into the room. What should I do? We love our polling places and the people that allow us to vote there. If you have someone that isn't allowed in the room and they just loiter around, please let them know the law doesn't allow them to do that. If they're just passing through the room to get to another area of the building, well, that's okay. Can someone bring a person to help them vote? Absolutely. A person can choose just about anyone they want to assist them. There are certain restrictions, so have the person assisting the voter complete the oath to provide assistance form. Will there be kids voting this year? This is a volunteer organization. They usually try to have kids voting in the general election and we will work with them to make sure they are in locations that have the space they need without compromising your important task. Voters taking pictures of their ballots. Voters can take pictures of their ballot and only their ballots. We have to be aware that any possible photography that may capture other voters is compromising their right to a private ballot. Assisting voters at the voting machine. If a voter is having trouble inserting their ballot, have the voter place their ballot back inside the privacy folder and then assist them. If the voter is unable to insert the ballot, have a second person assist you with the voter. At the voting machine, here are a few tips. Stand an arm's length of distance between you and the machine. The distance allows the voter to remove their ballot from their privacy folder without feeling that you are close enough to see their ballot. This happens to be the number one complaint of most voters. Poll watchers must apply before the state mandated deadline. They will be given a colorful name tag to wear and they can travel from place to place. Poll watchers are usually appointed by candidates, parties, or other political interest groups, and they are under the guidance of the clerk. Some of the rules that a poll watcher must follow, they can station themselves near the clerk and observe the voting process. They're allowed to ask the clerk questions and they can come and go as they please. A poll watcher cannot, however, station themselves in a manner that hinders the voting process. They cannot speak with voters or other workers, other than the clerk, inside the polling room. They're not allowed to talk on their phones while inside the polling room or be with another poll watcher from their same organization. Outside the polling location, there is a 150 foot no solicitation zone. The 150 foot no solicitation zone excludes exit poll takers, which are allowed inside the 150 foot zone. Notice, we will have exit poll takers this election. 
So who are exit poll takers? They are usually a member of a media research organization. An exit poll taker talks to voters on the way out of a polling site to survey them about how they voted. Exit polls are used by the media to gauge how the election is going and who the popular candidates or issues are. They are allowed within the 150-foot no solicitation zone, and they can greet voters as the voters are leaving the polling site. In order to prepare your no solicitation boundary, you have some tools. In your cage, there are no solicitation boundary signs. They are on the top shelf. You also have a new 150-foot measuring wheel. Your new measuring wheel will digitally measure to a 150 feet. It's very easy to use and accurate. Your new measuring wheel will be located in your cage. To use your measuring wheel, push the button on the left side of the measuring wheel display. This will return the counter to zero. Then simply push the wheel as you walk to engage the counter. Once you've measured to 150 feet, at that point, place your sign. Let's walk through the solicitation requirements at a sample polling site. From the front door, you want to measure with your new wheel 150 feet. This is your no solicitation zone, and it covers all areas from the beginning of the building straight out 150 feet. But what do you do if the 150-foot measurement is clean across the other side of the street? You'll notice on the diagram on the left that the 150-foot no solicitation zone, noted in orange, extends across the street. In this instance, place your signs on the polling location side of the street at the edge of the property. On the right, you'll notice that the actual polling room is located in a bigger building. In this diagram, the voting room is in a building set back further from the street. In this case, the entire building is considered a voting location, and the 150-foot no solicitation zone is from the entrance of the building toward the thoroughfare. The entire property is considered public on election day. People cannot plant signs on that property, as noticed by the unhappy faces. Those were signs left by someone planted on the property. Feel free to pull them up. These happy faces are signs that were placed correctly, either on a neighboring business with permission or across the road. Please note, there's also county and city ordinances regarding the placage of political signs. The important thing to remember regarding solicitation is that there's a wrong way for a candidate to promote a campaign by planting signs and leaving them on the property of your polling location. And then there's the right way. As long as they are 150 feet from the entrance to your polling location and they don't leave signs unattended or just posted on the property, it's okay. The person campaigning must have the signs on or about their person at all times. More information regarding the solicitation rules and laws can be found in your manual. A successful election can only happen with a successful team. Elections excite people and the upcoming elections will be busy. Solicitation and media interest will also be a part of these elections. So work together. If you have someone at your site that doesn't understand the laws, have them contact the Supervisor of Elections Office directly for more information.